Hello and welcome everyone. So um, thank you all for joining me. I'm very excited to have you all here and I'm hoping that you'll get a lot from today's session. So hello to everyone who's um, said hi in the comments there. Um, it's wonderful to have you. So um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name's Joan. Um, I'm a former UK doctor and I'm an OET preparation provider and OET all-star. Um, and what that means really is that um, my courses have been approved by OET as being of high quality. And being an OET all-star means that I regularly provide um, sessions on social media um, directly here on the uh, official OET um, channel and on my own um, social media channels as well. So um, with that said, um, let's um, move swiftly on to today's session on OET listening. Okay, so listening part A can be a challenging um, subtest and um, what I'm aiming to do is to give you some strategies that will help make it a little bit easier. Um, so what we're going to be focusing on today is how to anticipate the answers um, to get a higher score. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you and we'll get into the main part of the session. Okay, if you just bear with me one moment. All right, so here we go. Okay, so... As I mentioned, we're going to be um, looking at how to anticipate um, the answers in OET listening. Um, when I say anticipate, I mean we're going to try and find ways that we can make a very educated guess as to what the answer might be. Sometimes you can't get it exactly right, but you can get your brain prepared to hear the right thing. So. Um, let's move on to look at what exactly we're going to cover in today's session. Okay, so if you just, I um, just need to kind of modify my screen here. I see it displaying things a little strangely. Okay, so, all right. Uh, I think I need to alter something here. No, well, looking okay now, I think. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all in today's session is we're going to um, look at the listening um, listening test format, um, just a brief overview of that. And then we're going to um, have a look at um, strategies that can be used um, to anticipate um, the answers. And we'll put it all into practice with some questions. Um, so you'll be um, actively participating in the session, answering some questions. Um, there will be a little bit of time at the end for questions and answers. And I will make available um, for you a free worksheet that you can use for further practice. Okay, so moving on then. We're going to look first of all at the format of the test. So, Here's a summary of what to expect if you're new to this um, subtest. Uh, many of you have already kind of looked into how this um, subtest works, but for those of you that aren't sure, let's just recap. Uh, you're going to hear a conversation, and that conversation is going to be between a healthcare professional and a patient. Now, the consultation will be patient-centered, and by that I mean most of the talking is going to be done by the patient. The test is there to assess your ability to understand patients and hear specific details. There will be two audio recordings that you will be listening to. Um, each will have 12 questions, so you've got 24 questions to answer in total. The format is that you will essentially be filling in a set of case notes. And what you'll put in the gap 
will be exactly what you hear in the audio. So there'll be a word or a few words you'll hear and those words will need to be directly put in the case notes. You won't need to transform the word form at all. You'll have 30 seconds um, to read the notes before each recording plays. And those are your precious 30 seconds to understand what you're going to hear and to be able to anticipate likely answers. Now, just a side note, um, spelling is important, but um, deductions won't be made if the spelling mistakes are very minor, okay? So um, just do your best with that, um, but know that if the, the, the error is very minor, you could be okay. Okay, so let's outline the strategy that you can use in order to anticipate the answers. So first of all, you need to understand the context. So you're going to get clues about the topic being discussed in the introduction and the heading that you'll see in your exam paper. Then you're going to make an educated guess as to what the likely answers might be based on understanding the context. What you'll be doing in effect is activating your mind to recall relevant knowledge that you have and relevant words and phrases that might associate with a consultation of this type. Then you're going to look for additional clues, extra clues that you can find in those case notes. And these clues will come from keywords that you'll see in the question paper, as well as looking carefully at the text you'll see before the gap you fill and after the gap you fill. Once you've thought about what answer that you think is likely um, to be um, required, you can check whether that anticipated answer actually works grammatically. If it doesn't make grammatical sense, then there's been a mistake, okay? Anyway, one other point to remember is to keep an open mind. You might think that you have, have guessed the right thing as you try and anticipate the answer, but don't get too attached to your um, anticipated answer. It may be different. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back to step one, looking at the context and how that will help us anticipate the answers. All right, so let's have a look at this sample um, listening part A test. As you can see, at the top here, you get um, information which will give you the context. So in this listening extract, you're going to hear a gastroenterologist talking to a patient called Sandra Locke. And then in the questions, so there are 12 questions here, you will complete the notes with a word or short phrase. Okay, so with this in mind then, um, we're going to try and use this context um, to try and activate our minds and think of um, the sort of words and phrases we might expect. Okay, so can anyone tell me what you're going to expect to, to be discussed if this is a consultation with a gastroenterologist. I'm sure you could all give me a quick answer for that. So what do you expect to be discussed if this is a conversation with a gastroenterologist? Just in broad, general terms. So let's see what, um, you, can, um, what you can think of here. Again, we can think of the context in terms of what is being discussed at different parts of the consultation. So 
you can move on and get ideas about um, what might be said by looking at the headings and seeing, OK, so they're first going to talk about recent medical history and then they're going to talk about family history. So from knowing the context from here and in the headings, we can guess what's likely to be discussed. OK, so what might be discussed with a gastroenterologist? OK, so I can see a few comments coming in here. And yes, yes, it's, it's things related to the digestive system, isn't it? And when we look at the medical history, um, we're going to we're going to see things that are going to be related to um, health problems that have happened recently. We're going to look at the family history and there's going to be very specific information given here. So some great answers in the comments here. So as you're looking at these sections in your mind, you might think, OK, so it's a gastroenterologist. It's got to be related to the digestive system. When it comes to the recent medical history, OK, then they're going to talk about illnesses, perhaps treatment, maybe investigations. And then regarding the family history, this is going to get quite specific, isn't it? And we're going to think of specific conditions and, and diseases. OK, so very good answers in the comment. I can see that using the context, you're able to kind of activate some relevant um, words that you have in English. So moving on then, um, we're going to look at the case notes a little closer to get more clues. So here, not only are we going to look at um, the headings and look at the keywords there, but we're also going to have a look at the case note entries, looking at the words that come before the gap and after the gap. OK, so here's when we start to ask ourselves a few questions. For example, well, will the noun be an well, will the word rather be a noun, a verb or an adjective? So what do you think? We can use the context here of possible viral infection and then something undertaken to think of what could possibly go here. So what might a doctor do if a vi viral infection is suspected? What word might you expect to hear after, oh, sorry, not after, but before undertaken? So something is undertaken. What could it be? Have a little think. I'm sure some of you might be able to, to guess, even in general terms, what this might be. So we're going to move on now um, to do a little bit more anticipation. And we're going to anticipate what might um, come in the next gap. So number 14, 15 and 16. So for number 14, well, will it be a noun? Will it be a verb? Will it be an adjective? So it's low levels of something. So something. So we know it must be a noun. OK, so then we can think of, well, what things might there be low levels of? So then that can activate the mind to think of suitable words there. And then we can use our knowledge of grammar and how words collocate to think about words that we know can come before the word undertaken. OK. Oh, <laughs> I've just spotted an error. I'm so sorry. Causing confusion. This relates to number 13. OK. Um, so. Um, so, yes, sorry for the confusion there. Low levels of something, OK? Before here, we can use this information too. 
because if we've guessed this, then it will also help us guess this. So apologies for the confusion here, okay? We can use the knowledge from 13 to help us with 14. So low levels of something, and that's likely to be a noun. So number 15, what do you think it could be? It must be a medical condition, right? Because the father died of something. It must be a noun, it must be a condition, and it could relate to gastroenterology. Okay, and then number 16, similarly, we can think of a condition. We know it's the family history, and we're likely um, to be um, looking at health conditions. Okay, so let's move on and try this out, okay? What I'd like you to do is get um, something that you can write on um, because I'm wanting you to try and see if you can hear the answers for the questions that we've just tried to anticipate, okay? So get ready to listen, have something to write with, and let's see if your anticipated answers have helped you. Okay, so I'm going to press play now. In fact, I'm just going to check if you can hear this. So let's test it first. If you can't hear it, let me know and I will change something for you. So, Sandra, you've been referred to me by your GP for a possible colonoscopy, is that right? So, Sandra, you've been referred to me by your GP for a possible colonoscopy, is that right? Yes, Anyone that's hearing right. Anything? So, can you tell me what made you see your GP? Had you had some type of tummy upset? If there's no Actually, sound, I was feeling really tired and run down again. at the time Give and just wanted a check up. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start that again for you, okay? Because I don't think we're getting the sound that we should. So just bear with me one moment. The joy of live, live um, presentations. Unfortunately, sometimes these things can happen. Um, so just bear with me one second and I'll get it all sorted out. All right. Just getting the presentation back up for you. And we'll get to the right page and I will reshare it for you. Okay, just bear with me one second. Okay. So I'm just going to share the screen again. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, <laughs> let's see if we have it now. All right, so let's try this out. I'm gonna press play now. <laughs> So, Sandra, you've been referred to me by your GP for a possible colonoscopy, is that right? Yes, that's right. So, can you tell me what made you see your GP? Had you had some type of tummy upset? Actually, I was feeling really tired and run down at the time and just wanted a check-up. Mm -hmm. He suspected a possible virus and recommended I have a fasting blood test, which I did. And when he was explaining the results a few days later and taking a more detailed history, that's when he said I should come and see you. So did the test results show something out of the ordinary? Well, just that my iron levels were on the low side. Mm. But he said that was to be expected given my condition at the time. But then he asked me about my family history. You see, my father died at 57 from bowel cancer mm -hmm. and his father at 52, but we don't really know what of because he refused to see a doctor. 
The family suspect it was also bowel cancer, though, because of the symptoms he had just before he died. Mm. Then on my mother's side of the family, my grandfather is alive but has end-stage pancreatic cancer. Okay. I'll get you a mo- give you a moment um, to be able to sort of decide on your answers there and then we'll discuss. Okay. All right. So here are the answers. How did you do? So hopefully when you were anticipating the answers for number 13, for example, you will have realized that it was some sort of test. And knowing that will have helped you kind of hear the answer, which was specifically fasting blood test. And then in terms of the next one, we can think of things that can be found in low levels. Um, You might have anticipated um, a different answer here. Um, For example, we can have low levels of potassium, you know, um, specifically here was the low levels of iron. And this actually makes sense um, within the context of the patient feeling run down. Okay, so we can see we had a specific condition here and obviously one related to mortality. Okay, so um, so that um, was your answer for there. And then for number 16, you will have predicted another condition, perhaps not specifically this condition, but you will have known it would have been a another um medical condition that needed to go in there. So hopefully anticipating um, the answers has helped you out a little bit there. Um, so let's let's move on and think of just something else that could possibly help you if you did find that a little bit tricky. Now, sometimes um, it can be difficult um, because it's hard to keep track of where you are. So if that is a problem for you, just remember to listen out for keywords from the question paper and also the synonyms of keywords and and synonymous language in general. And that will help direct you as to where you are in the audio. So if you think about it, the notes are simply paraphrasing what's been said. Now, remember um, that the answer that you put in in the gap will be exactly what you hear. It's just that the other words around it may have been um, may have been stated differently. Okay, so just to explain this point a little bit, okay, um, in the case notes, we had words like possible viral infection, low levels of paternal grandfather died of unknown causes and maternal grandfather has. Okay, so these are the words you heard in the case notes, but actually you don't hear these exact words in the audio. And when we look at the transcript, we can analyze what words actually were used when we're um, trying to listen out for the answers. And as you can see, the answers are here lined in red and those are stated in the exact form but the words around it are different okay so can anyone tell me for example what was said instead of possible viral infection can anyone read this part and tell me what was said instead of possible viral infection and then move on to try and find other words used instead of low levels of. Look in this section. And then try and find what was said instead of paternal grandfather and unknown causes. And then have a look for what is said instead of maternal grandfather.
let's see how you did. Okay, so you can see here the synonymous language used. So instead of possible viral infection, the patient says possible virus. Instead of low levels of, it was on the low side. Instead of paternal grandfather, it's his father, my father's father. Instead of maternal grandfather, it's my grandfather on my mother's side of the family. Okay, so that's just a side note, but just something to be aware of if you are finding keeping track a little bit difficult. Okay, so let's remind ourselves again of the answer and anticipation strategies that we need to use. The first is understanding the context. The second is looking for case note clues. And the third is just making sure that the word that you have anticipated or the word or phrase, I should say, works grammatically. Let's continue listening and finish this, um, this exam paper, okay? So you've got eight questions left to complete. Um, in the test, you're given 30 seconds to complete 12 questions. So I am going to give you approximately 20 seconds, okay? 20, approximately 20 seconds to um, complete these. So, well, anticipate rather. So you're going to first anticipate and then you're going to um, listen to the audio. So your 20 seconds starts now. Okay, I'm going to play the audio for you. Okay, and how old are you now, Sandra? I've just turned 50. My GP said not to bother with the self-test kit, but I'm a bit concerned about having a colonoscopy, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. For one thing, there's the hospital part. Ever since I was a kid, I've been really scared of hospitals. Then, of course, there's the needles. I'm sure I'm not the only one to have a fear of those. <laughs> it's more the sight of them rather than the feeling. Mm. But the biggest thing that frightens the life out of me is the possibility of having a terminal illness. Well, in terms of the colonoscopy, I can assure you that we give you a very strong sedative to make sure you're completely unaware of the entire procedure. Have you ever experienced any symptoms? No, I haven't. My GP asked me the same and he suggested some, but I've never had any of them. I had lost quite a bit of weight, but I'd also been on a diet at the time when I saw him. Mm -hmm. I do have some occasional tenderness in my belly, and sometimes I find myself short of breath, kind of puffing. Mm. But again, because I've been sick, perhaps it's just from that. Has it affected your life in any way? I mean, have you noticed a drastic change in your work or hobbies? Well, I've been a chef for 20 years plus. I work in a fairly hectic environment, so I don't really have time to stop and think about it. Mm. The restaurant's always full on. I used to play tennis at the weekend, and yeah, it's definitely held me back from going. Generally, I stay at home. I read a lot more these days. If I have enough energy, I try to go jogging, but I never go very far. Nothing like before. Mm. I mean, I used to get to 12 kilometres. I try to stay fit and healthy, though. I'm a big believer in prevention rather than cure. I take a daily multivitamin just to get the full range. And to be honest, that's out of laziness more than anything. Mm. It's so easy taking just the one tablet. But I also have vitamin C powder, the kind you need to stir into a glass of water. Mm -hmm. I'd never take those chewable tablets that you can buy because they're practically useless. Also, each morning I have a teaspoon of fish oil after breakfast. Well, they're all fine to take. In fact, I'd encourage you to continue all of what you just mentioned. Okay, so how did that go? So I'm sure some of you found the 20 second limit to anticipate the answers quite brief. Okay, so just as a reminder, I gave you 20 seconds because you just had eight questions to go through. So in the test, you're going to have 30 seconds to anticipate the answers for um, 12 questions. And then obviously, you'll 
need to move on to the second um, audio and repeat the same process. So if you did find that a little bit tricky to anticipate the answers in that time, I would say that don't worry about it. OK, that's perfectly normal. Um, what it will take is just a little bit of practice. OK, and um, after you've done it a few times, you'll get um, quite good at it. So let's see anyway um, what answers you got and how anticipating the answers has helped you. OK, so here are the answers. So for number 17, the answers, answer was hospitals. And number 18 was needles. OK, um, these are common um, fears or phobias. So that you might have anticipated these. And we can see here that, you know, this was maybe not so easy to guess but you could see that it was diagnosed with. So it's going to be something to do with a medical condition, okay? In terms of the symptoms, um, we, can, we can anticipate that it's gonna be some symptom related to the abdomen. So it might, she might've said bloating, she might've said discomfort, something like that. What she actually said was tenderness and you can see here that in brackets we have occasional. So the answer would have been accepted even if you didn't have this in. If it was just tenderness, that would have been accepted too. Okay. So then as we go into lifestyle details, um, we activate our mind and think about what kind of things people do um, in terms of their lifestyle. So we might think of, you know, how they look after their health, for example. And we can see here that um, what's filling the gap are things to do with nutrition and exercise. Take, take note here how your, your knowledge of grammar would have helped you get this answer correct by knowing that you needed the verb to be in the ing form, so jogging. Um, these were, um, perhaps some of these were a little harder to anticipate, but we can think of takes a, and then we're like, okay, well, you can take a tablet, and that sort of starts getting your mind in the right direction. Okay, and a morning dose of, makes us think of something that we take for our health. And we can see that for all of them, um, we needed a noun. The article here gave us a, a clue that a noun was needed. Um, so hopefully anticipating the answers helped you out a little there. So to wrap up, in order to anticipate the answers in listening part A, it's important to understand the context. Look really carefully for any clues you can find in the case notes. Use your knowledge of grammar to make sure that you, you get the word exactly right. And then keep an open mind because sometimes the anticipated answer is, is is quite um, easy to think of and sometimes it's a little harder. And even if when you think that you might have it exactly right, just keep the mind open in case it's something slightly different um, you hear. Okay, so now we've got a, a few minutes to have a look at um, some questions that you had. So I'm just gonna go into the comments because I can see that there were a few questions asked earlier, um, but please feel free to, to add in um, any additional questions. So um, I'm, having, I'm looking at a question here that I can see about use of prepositions. Um, okay, so the example um, that um, that I've been given here um, from um, one of one of the viewers is is making a mistake with prepositions. Um, would it res result in a reduction in your mark? Well. It will only result in a reduction in your mark if it changes the meaning completely of what you've written. So, for example, um, the example that um, I've been given is the 
difference between saying turn over bed in relation to turn over in bed. Okay, in that case, that preposition in is essential. Okay, because turn over bed means something completely different to turn over in bed. So in that example, yes, the preposition would be absolutely essential, but it's not always. So the key is, does it change the meaning or not of what you've written? Okay, so I hope that's helped answer um, the question. Okay, uh, there was a similar doubt. Um, okay, so Charles wrote a question about um, the answer for one of the questions. So this question relates to the details, the, the, the actual detail of the answer. So for example, um, you'll recall that one of the answers were related to pancreatic cancer. And the full answer was end stage pancreatic cancer. But simply pancreatic cancer on its own would also have been acceptable. Okay. Okay. And a similar question about um, use of articles. So marks should not be deducted for kind of um, like a missing article, for example, writing terminal illness instead of a terminal illness. That would be okay because you're filling in case notes and everything is in effect being written in note form. Okay. Um, let's have a look at um, other, other questions. So about um, capitalizing answers. Okay, is it okay to? Um, you could, um, you could, but um, just um, bear in mind that when you write using capital letters, that's going to slow you down. Um, so um, just bear that in mind, okay? Um, so yeah, it's something to think about. Okay. Um, and another question about missing the, you know, the word, exact form of the word put in the gap. For example, the question was, if I omitted the S in the answer, fear of hospitals, I think it was fear of or phobia of hospitals, would it be expected? I would expect that answer to be accepted. Okay, so hopefully that's um, helped answer some of your questions um, today. Um, if you um, feel that you um, would benefit from a little bit more guidance um, or a little bit more practice, um, the first thing that you can do is go and get um, the free um, worksheet that I've created for you. Um, you just need to go to this link here. So it's ashcroftmedicalenglish.com forward slash worksheet hyphen LPA for listening part A. Okay, so take a note of that and you'll be able to get your worksheet. In that, I summarize the tips for how to anticipate and then there's an exercise to follow. Okay, and if you do feel like you need a little bit of extra guidance in terms of um, tuition, um, I'm happy to help. Um, you can find out more about that on my um, website and there's various different ways that um, you can be supported in your preparation journey. But just don't leave it too late um, because that all gets quite stressful for you and we don't want that. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it would be lovely if you join me for my next All-Star session, which will be on Monday, the 12th of February. Um, oh, my goodness. I can see another error. What is going on with me today? <laughs> okay. Monday, the 12th of October, uh, February, not October. Okay. Ignore this. 12th of February. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you then. And in my next 
um, session. I'm not going to make so many mistakes. I promise. You take care. Forgive the errors. I hope you gain something from this. And I look forward to seeing you next time. You take care. Bye-bye.